All right, welcome back to The Effect. So I'm gonna close out the fixed effects chapter by talking about something that is not fixed effects, uh, and that is random effects. Uh, so what we've been doing in this chapter is by fo is focusing on the difference between between variation and within variation. Right? Between variation being variables that vary uh, between individuals, right? Austria has a different geography than England does, and also the variables that vary within individuals. Uh, so Austria might have different politics from one year to the next. So fixed effects is a way of controlling away all of the between variation and leaving us just with the within variation. Uh, and it is effective at doing that. Uh, there are, however, some downsides to this. We are controlling away a lot of interesting information. Uh, we are tossing this variation out, uh, which means a couple things. One, we can't study anything that is within this. Like if I wanna know what is the effect of your birthplace, well, I can't use fixed effects to study that because your birthplace doesn't have any within variation. I've tossed out all the between variation, which means that anything interesting in there has gone away. Additionally, uh, fixed effects has some poor statistical power. We are tossing out a lot of interesting information that we have, uh, and in doing so, we are gonna be tossing out information, which is gonna make us more imprecise in our estimates. Random effects is a way of trying to solve this issue uh, that does try to get rid of that between variation, but doesn't get rid of all of it, uh, which improves our statistical performance uh, and also allows us to study some things that might be in that between variation, uh, but still allows us to close some of those back doors that we are interested in closing. So what random effects is, is it says, okay, we've got this between variation. We know that Austria is different from England, is different from France, is different from whatever, or you are different from me, or it's different from our neighbor down the street, where individuals are different. But we don't just allow it to sort of be all willy-nilly, all your individual effects can be anything that they want. Instead, we force those individual effects to follow some sort of distribution. We say, you know what, we have these different individual effects, I'm gonna make an assumption. Anytime in statistics you make an assumption, you're getting yourself back some statistical power, but also running the risk that if the assumption is wrong, then your results would be bad. So we're adding an assumption and we are making an assumption about the distribution of those effects. I'm willing to say something like, ah, I know that these countries are different and I'm willing to say that these effects follow a normal distribution or something like that. When we do this, uh, we are constraining those individual effects. By not allowing them to be anything that they want, we might not be getting rid of all that between variation. But also, by constraining it and adding that assumption, we are getting back some statistical power uh, because we are adding an assumption. Anytime you add an assumption, you're probably going to get some more precision out of your estimates. So I will say doing just the thing that I just said doesn't always work that well. Uh, it uh, requires, if you are really trying to close those, back, those between variation back doors, uh, for that to really work, uh, you need to assume that your individual effect is unrelated to all the control variables in the treatment, which is usually not the case. However, there are some more advanced versions of random effects uh, that do a little bit better of a job. There's two main ways to think about it. Uh, one is what's called hierarchical linear modeling, which is actually very, very common and probably more common than fixed effects in a lot of fields, although in, eco in economics we tend to prefer fixed effects. What hierarchical linear modeling does is it says, okay, we know that we have these individual effects, we're going to allow them to follow distributions, but also we're going to use different characteristics to predict where you are in that distribution. So I have an individual effect for you, and I'm going to use things like your geography uh, that I can measure to predict where your individual effect is. This gives me a bit more information about where you are on that distribution, uh, and therefore allows me to better understand uh, what your individual effect is, and I don't have to make quite a lot of assumptions about it. Like, it's okay if your individual effect is related to geography now because I'm incorporating that relationship in my estimation. The other cool thing about hierarchical linear modeling is you don't just have to focus on that individual effect and how you can predict that uh, with individual characteristics. You can also do things like, hey, how does the effect of one variable on another vary with those individual characteristics? You can use it as an alternative to things like interaction terms, as we might do uh, with a more standard regression model. The other way that we can better use random effects is using what's called correlated random effects, which is an approach where you, once again, uh, allow for that individual random effect to be related to some characteristics that you can measure. A typical way of doing this is what's called the Mundlach estimator, and sort of one variant of that is you simply, uh, you know that demeaning approach where we got the average for each individual and subtracted those out? Well, this time we're still going to get the average for each individual, uh, and we're going to still subtract it out, and we're going to use that subtracted the d mean variable in the model but we're also going to include the mean itself so we have two different versions of each variable we have the mean which which concentrates on the between variation and we have the d mean variable which concentrates on the within variation we had both of those in the model which allows us to separate out the between and within variation so we can use whatever mix of the two we want here's the between here's the within do what you like that is sort of in general what random effects does it doesn't get rid of all the between variation 
If you just use standard random effects, it gives you a mix of the between effect and the within effect. If you use a more advanced method like hierarchical linear modeling or correlated random effects, it says, hey, here's the between effect, here's the within effect, do what you will. Uh, and it improves your statistical modeling in that way. Random effects is not always the right answer, uh, but it is a very attractive alternative to uh, fixed effects when it comes to controlling for away that between variation, because it has some nice statistical properties. At least in law, as long as the assumptions that you need to make for it to work apply. And those assumptions often have to do uh, with the relationship between the individual effect, or at least what part of the individual effect you have not modeled with those covariates, if you're using correlated uh, random effects or uh, hierarchical linear modeling, and the treatment effect that you are interested in, or the treatment variable that you're interested in. That closes us out on the fixed effects chapter. Uh, thank you very much.